Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, tea sippers, it's your girl T, and welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered. I got my girl BL Sherelle here on the line. BL, say what's up to the people. Hey, tea sippers. Hey, y'all. I miss y'all. What's going on? I know it's been a while since you've been here, so I'm glad you were able to join me today. I'll be trying to find the right topics for you. So, anything with hip hop and music, I love getting your commentary on there. So, it has been a lot of drama over this weekend concerning DJ Academics. Um, He has pissed off a lot of people in hip hop. They feel like he's doing too much. Um, He's gotten big headed and arrogant. And the main issue first that happened with DJ Academics is that he caught the pioneers of hip hop old and dusty. Mm. Caught them a bunch of old dusty. So they haven't done anything for hip hop. They're not helping the youth. And so LL Cool J at that point, he got word of this. Master Flex, Kid Capri, a lot of these guys, you know, heard what DJ Academics had to say and they were not happy. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what Kid Capri wrote, and then we will listen to what LL Cool J said as well. So Kid Capri says, I don't understand why what this guy says even matters. You make the wackest people famous out here. He made some money from talking on the net since the pandemic and now he's going to disrespect the pioneers instead of taking that energy and figuring out how to help some of them at funk flex what you calling him brother for he's a meatball for what he said anything goes out here shake my head take the dj off his name he runs his mouth he don't dj so dj capri was not here for it we'll play you guys a snippet of what ll cool j had to say so y'all go ahead and check this out that's what it is. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Them old rappers, man, them niggas. Bro, have you seen any of these old rappers who be like, yo, they're the foundation of hip hop, really living good? Them niggas be looking really dusty. I kid you not. And then none of y'all trying to cover me because I don't fuck with y'all niggas either. So I'm just going to tell you the truth. Y'all be looking like Every time they be like an old, old nigga talking about hip hop, you be like, yo, bro, you sure you in better this? Because everybody else living better than you. It came to my attention that a DJ, and um, I'm not going to say any names because I don't think it's necessary. A DJ basically said that, um, you know, a lot of the pioneers in hip hop are, you know, they're dusty or how can they be the pe- person that, um, you know, invented hip hop if, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of money. Um, or if they don't look or represent like they have a lot of dough, right? Let me explain something to you um, and, and, and say this for you guys. Don't confuse someone's ability to develop a business model. Don't conflate. In other words, don't think just because somebody knows how to get money or fails to get money that they didn't make a contribution to the culture. No one discusses Miles Davis's bank account. We don't talk about John Coltrane's bank account. We don't talk about a lot of even rock musicians, a lot of them. We don't talk about their bank accounts. A lot of great country artists, we don't talk about their bank accounts. Um, This idea that you have to have money or else you don't have any value is a bad idea and it's a it's a it's a it's kind of like it's a misinformed way of looking at the world and the culture there are artists out here first of all let me let me let me say this first of all you know like let's talk about like young artists right which who i love i love the young artists let's be clear i'm very much a guy who embraces the young artists i believe in every generation i believe in you i care about you Let me say this to you, though. Today, you could come up with your five-year plan, your 10-year plan, your 20-year plan. You can go find a manager. You can find an accountant. You could find somebody that means something to you. 
um, you know, to help you. You can find a team to help your career go to the next level. When hip hop first started, there were no managers. There were no accountants that believed in it. Record companies didn't even believe in it. Nobody believed in it. How can you make a five year plan or a 10 year plan on something that doesn't even exist yet? That people have never even heard of. So just because a couple of these guys and girls and people out here made songs and made music and made contributions to this culture, or even dancers danced and 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 and, and put made these contributions called just because they didn't get rich, just because they weren't able to pile up millions or billions of dollars, does not mean that they didn't make a contribution to this culture. That does not mean that they didn't do something. They created an industry that we all ate off of. They created an industry that you eat off of. When you go out there and you go monetize your brand, when you go monetize your brand, when you go get your, your whatever and do what you got to do to, to build your career, when you go out there and, and negotiate your deals and negotiate your checks and talk tough, guess what? That money, that bread, that food that you eating was created by those same people that you disrespecting. That industry was created by them same people that you call in, you know, foul words, foul language. The, thing, the people that you're referring to. So my thing is this. It's always good. It's always good to get money. It's always important. It's important. It's important to get money. I agree. I'm all about getting paper. I've been talking about it my whole career. But don't ever, ever, ever confuse being rich with making a contribution to our culture. Don't ever play yourself like that again. Because trust me, you playing yourself. Because without these dudes and these girls who started this hip hop culture, a lot of the guys that's out there talking tough, you wouldn't even have a career. You'd be, we'd be on the corner with a beer talking about what's the next move we gonna make. So I would say, approach this game with humility and be glad and be thankful that these pioneers, you know, these exactly slave mentality, be glad that these pioneers help create this culture. And let's show them love. Let's elevate them. Let's celebrate them. That's why I started Rock the Bells. That's why I started this movement. So I wouldn't have to listen to, to foolish rhetoric about people that changed the world. These people changed the entire world. The whole planet runs on hip hop culture right now. The whole planet, every commercial, every, the, 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 you know, everything you could think of is all about hip hop. And there are people out there that started this thing and I think that they deserve to be honored and respected. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm not going to say no names. I'm not going to say nothing foul. I'm not going to go at nobody's character. I'm just going to say. Think before you speak. Okay, so y'all just heard what LL Cool J had to say about the situation. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about it. So, B.O., what do you think about all the drama that's gone down with DJ Academics? What do you think about what Kid Capri had to say? And, you know, what LL said touched a lot of people. So I want to hear your thoughts. Well, because what LL said was perfect. It was perfect, like his response. He didn't distract with a bunch of name calling and, you know, a bunch of bullshit. You know what I mean? He was very eloquent in his response he was mm -hmm. very informative in his response i really respect the ll's response it was it was beautiful yeah. um now kid capri i mean he sounds really angry about about what x said which not rightfully so but he's a more successful um founder such as i know he's not exactly from the founding generation he's like right after but he's had a very lasting career you know what i'm saying um mm -hmm. but i just think that this conversation is worthy of having should he have called them dusty no but i mean who listens if you're not a little bit uh you know you know you gotta throw some spice on there to get people to hear what you're trying to say like yeah, this generation that, definitely needs a little bit of spice we need shade we need you know yes. we need a little bit of drama 
Yes. Had he just said, oh, the founding fathers and the people who came before are not really helping the youth. This would have just been another day in the middle. Nobody would have ever been talking about it. Nobody would have ever heard it. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.